So, hello, welcome back. Today, well, kind of a very special video because I got my copy of the UHQR kind of blue and I could do the first listening, the first comparing, the first thoughts and impressions I can get about this beautiful release and now of course I want to talk to you about this stuff immediately. So, let's get let's get right into it. Don't let it take any longer than needed. Probably you've all seen the outer box set, the outer case. It's the typical beautiful packaging. I really like this wooden part, this uh, beautiful packaging. My favorite packaging of uh, those kind of releases. like them more than the One Steps or the Craft uh, releases. Beautiful. The Craft small batch, by the way, I meant. So this you probably all have seen nowadays over and over. And let's get quick into the other content. You get your hype sticker with information about this release. Then you get this little flyer where you see 25,000 copies, your certificates, photos of the production process of how an UHQR is made. Then again on a larger flyer you can see again proce processing process, manufacturing process and I'll talk about this this ultra flat profile. Nice to know, nice to have. Then you have your of course your advertising flyer where they talk about other releases and now for the first time but I it, it is as it, it is expected now for the first time not the announcement of the next UHQR release only only hint is that there of course we all know that by now will be a 45 rpm release on, on, on a later later date and Last but of course not least, a beautiful, beautiful booklet of session photos. I always like that stuff. Very informative, very nice, very nice to have. So this is the content of this fantastic release. But now let me uh, uh, tell you something about this vinyl. We all know it's this decarbonized, top-notch quality virgin <coughs> vinyl they get. But when you compare it to, for example, this UHQR, the Aqualung, you can see that they again, now you won't see that through the video, I guess, maybe you can, there is slightly color difference. This one is a bit clearer, this one is a bit more milky. Let me describe it this way. And that's what also Chad Kassim, I think, talked about in, in, in the, uh, this gorgeous panel I had the honor to do with uh, um, Chad Kassim, uh, Bernie Grundman, Michael Fremmer, Michael Hobson. And, and, and he talked about that they are this is an ongoing process. They always try and, 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 and they do it to, to erase the quality of the vinyl more and more and more. And so with this release of the kind of blue, it really looks like they have changed the formula once more. And if they do that, it's of course for the better. Now let's talk about the jacket. We have our beautiful top-notch quality Stoughton jackets. Beautiful one, great one. Okay, Miles Davis, kind of blue. Here it is. So, I gave it first listen and guess what? Brilliant, 
brilliant. I remember what 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 uh, uh, Bernie Grundman told about his mastering, about the mastering he did in 1994. If I understood him correctly, it was the first time and for sure the last time that Columbia gives this tapes, this three track tapes out for, for a remaster. And what he did wasn't, and this is a good thing, not, not very much. He told us that he let the tapes, he doesn't do a lot of EQing, not at all. He just gives us this information from the three track tape. And, and when you put on this, this, this record, it's so natural. The room, the space, the timing, the tempo is, is stunning. If, if you have the equipment that, that can get in a good use of this information, it's, it's brilliant. It's brilliant com what comes out of this, this, this album. Of course, we don't have to talk much about the, the album itself. It is considered as one, at least one of the best albums. Some, quite some people say it's the best uh, uh, jazz album. I wouldn't go that far because there are quite some great jazz albums out there in the world. But it's, of course, the best-selling jazz albums of all time. And so this is a huge, huge, very, very important release. And we can be so happy about two things. First, that we have this release in such a great, great quality. And second, that we have 25,000 copies of them, because no Everybody who wants can get this release for a decent price. And secondly, I, I think a lot of people who aren't into this audiophile stuff, into this audiophile remaster things up to now, will get into it. They will hear the difference. They will hear the difference on their system. And I think if you, if you once heard the improvement you can get from a very good pressing, you stick to it. You will look out for other very good pressings. And so I have very, very high hopes for, for uh, uh, the future of our beautiful, beautiful vinyl hobby. And, and this, this, uh, um, the magnitude of this release will help us further. And I did something else. I just didn't listen to this kind of blue from, from the UHQR. I also listened to my 45 RPM copy of, of, of MoFi. So, I, I do not want to do a shootout because I don't like to do a shootout from a 33 and a third against a 45. I will do a shootout when the 45 RPM is out there because it's apples with apples. But I can tell you this much. The Miles Davis Mobile Fidelity has significantly more EQing. It has significantly uh, a lot of uh, uh, bass. Uh, for example, and this is EQed, I'm, I'm quite sure, because you, you gain bass, but on the other end, of course, if you gain bass through EQing, you lose other information. It can't be uh, any different. And so, also, although this is only the 33 and the third, when it comes to the listening, overall listening experience, the UHQR smokes the mobile fidelity. It's, it's by far not this natural, this... Ah, in Germany we say selbstverständlich. It's, 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 it's so natural, it's so easy. It's, it's, if you hear it, you feel that's the way how it should be. Beautiful, beautiful mastering. Great job from Bernie Grundman. Uh, uh, I 
just can't say it enough. I, I think if you're into that and haven't already, you really should uh, 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 watch this uh, uh, panel we did. It was so interesting. I put a link down to the Acoustic Sounds uh, 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 YouTube uh, video. Uh, really have to watch it, what, what Bernie Grundman uh, tells and even, uh, not even, and also Michael Hobson. Uh, uh, very interesting stuff because Classic Records has been the first company who put out uh, uh, this uh, 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 three-track version on their Classic Records edition. And so interesting how, how, how deep they went into it, how deep they went into the details. And, and this also, of course, goes for this UHQR release from Miles Davis, Kind of Blue, up to now up to now and this is the 25th of May 2021 this is the audio file remaster release of 2021 and pa I, I don't think that we see another release this year that it has this magnitude <laughs> Keep them coming, never say never, but this is quite something. Miles Davis, kind of blue, UHQR, must have item, must have. Okay, enough said for today. Thank you for your time, hope you enjoyed it. See you on my next video. Bye.